This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, therapy has helped many of my friends and family. There is no need to feel bad or ashamed about going to therapy. Getting help is a part of the journey, and that's what BetterHelp does. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help you. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work. Or you just have a lot on your plate. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. Right now is a special offer to my listeners, Lay Your Brick listeners. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. That's betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Lay Your Brick. This episode, we have Mitch Johnson on. We talk about many ideas, techniques, and applications that help with our self-betterment journey. Mitch started his journey in 2014 and has been studying and applying the knowledge that he has learned ever since. This episode is all about the purpose and tools to help us along with our journey. I hope you enjoy, and let's get into it. Your your passion Mm -hmm. uh, blew me away. I absolutely loved it. Or I mean your 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 uh your purpose. Okay, um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fun story. I can I can read it or if you want to talk, you go for it if you know it by heart. Yeah. So um my mission in life is to inspire and lead others towards the life that they truly yearn for through conversations worth having, ideas worth sharing, and a life well lived. Um this is gonna sound super woo-woo. Whatever. I was at it, I was at it, I was probably 21 at the time, I think it was somewhere around there. I was living with roommates um, and I was, it was a very existential crisis kind of thing. I just actually changed my, my major in college and I didn't know really what I wanted to be doing. I'd fallen asleep um, and I woke up suddenly. And this is going to sound like such, do you cuss on this podcast? Yeah, <laughs> yep, you, yep, yep. yeah it's going to sound like such bullshit, but um, I woke up suddenly because um, I, I think I probably went to sleep that night. Um, as I did a lot of those nights around that time in my life thinking like, dude, what am I doing? What's going on? What's like, what's the thing? What's the plan? And, uh, those words came to me and I got up and I had a mirror on my door. It was like a full length mirror. Uh, so mm-hmm. I could, you know, check myself out, make sure I look good for the ladies at the advertising college. Yes. Where I went to classes the next <laughs> morning. and, um, and, uh, I wrote those words down and they like, they, they seemed like they came not from me, but like from beyond me. And, um, and I looked at it, I stepped back and I kept that up there the entire, that entire year, that entire semester. Um, but it's to this day, those, those words still ring true. And if you look at my channel, it's like those words are beginning to really manifest, um, in my social presence where it's like a lot of things I'm talking about are are ideas and insights that have served me well. Um, conversations that are worth having you're doing that i plan on i plan on doing my own podcast yes so it's like that's how that's going to manifest for me um and the idea with that is uh, having a podcast called mad world um okay no, mad world with mitch johnson because there's just a lot of craziness that are go- that's going on i like that and if i can just have a podcast that highlights humanity the best pieces and people that are just really doing their best to live a good example life um, that's, that's, those are conversations that are worth having. And then the last part is probably the most difficult thing. Cause, um, if there's one thing I've learned, um, in my, in my career with sales is like, is finding leaders that know the way, show the way and go the way. So like okay. for a very long time, I would not have considered myself as someone that would be worthy of, of leading. Um, and I, and I think that's probably a big portion why I didn't create content it's because in in i had those feelings i'm like i shouldn't be talking about these things Mm -hmm. and up until only recently have i decided like no it's like you've done all the self-development you can it's now time to contribute and so i decided okay like what if i lived out loud like what would it look like if i 
tried to live the fullest life I, I possibly could. And I documented the entire journey. And I started doing that last December. And, you know, in those two months, it's, it's grown to a page of 15,000 people that are following along for it. Wow. Um, and I, it, at first it was F underscore CK potential. And I was like, yeah, that's a little explicit. I'm probably turning some people off. So I was like, let's play both <laughs> sides of the, let's play both sides of the ball. Yeah. It's F potential, which you can either stand for full potential or fuck potential, depending on, depending on your prerogative, you know? So, um, yeah, that mission, I think it's just a, it's a guiding light for me. Right. Um, cause I think we just need more people that are speaking truth in growth and life. Cause there's a whole lot of division right now. And it's really ugly. It's disgusting, honestly. So for sure. I, I, I ranted. Dude, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah, that's yeah. exactly that's, that's what this is for. I fully agree with what you're saying though. And like you hit the nail right on the head. That's what this whole thing is for me as well. Like doing this podcast, I get the opportunity to talk to people who care about reaching potential and they're, and figuring out their passions and their purposes in life and everything. That's so important. It's such a key factor in self journeys and everything. So the fact that I get to sit down with people, you, you know, just in particular, like it's amazing. And I was literally having this conversation with my parents the other night. And I said, you know, what's really cool about this right now. You know, my podcast is not big by any means right now, right? Yeah. but it's way better because I'm having, I'm reaching out to people and they're getting back to me and then they want to do the podcast not knowing or maybe knowing that it's not it's not like I'm reaching a huge audience. So it's not for views or likes or anything. Like that. It's because they genuinely care about what they're talking and what we're talking about. And that's yeah. really special. Yeah. And it's it's also probably pretty cool. Um, um, just in terms of it's like, how do I put this? I'm, I'm beginning to ramble. <laughs> uh, dude, people say yes more often than you would think. Yeah. Right. Like just asking for what you want is surprisingly an effective method. That's not talked about enough. Dude, you know? <laughs> for sure. Because here's the thing, and you probably have heard of this too. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. Like, right. Yeah. Like, and when I started this podcast, I started it like almost a year ago in May. Um, and dude, that is, that's huge. Cause you've probably heard the, I'm, I'm so bad at cutting people off. I'm working you're on You're good. Um, but I, uh, if I see an opportunity to give recognition, I'm going to. You've heard the term pod fade, right? Pod fade is like, so it's just people start Maybe. a podcast, they get very excited about it and they fade oh, out. Yep, yep. You've gone past a year. That's incredible. Most most podcasts don't make it past, I think it's eight episodes. Yeah. So that that's incredible. This is episode uh, 16, I believe. Dude, Maybe, kudos. maybe 17 kudos that's awesome yeah no thank you i appreciate that and yeah it's super like important to me too because i i don't know there's just something about it that i i absolutely love doing but that that's why i wanted to talk to you today because you you hit it right on the head and the first thing was is that i so how i found you for people that don't know mitch he's on he's on tiktok he's on instagram and stuff like that but that's how i found him i was scrolling on on tiktok and boom, he comes on my page and it's right there. He's talking about, you have to master, master the skill of assigning meaning to the events in your life, which was huge. Like it's so true. And I want you to elaborate on that. And I also wow. want to talk about victimhood culture. Cause you said that Dude. in that TikTok. <laughs> Dude, no one cares until you win. No one cares until you overcome. Like that's, uh, um, yeah. So I'll, I'll start off with like what that means to me and that in a little yeah. more context on that video, but the whole, you have to match the skill of assigning meaning uh, to your life. Um, so where this whole F potential thing, uh, where my self-development journey began <clears throat> was when I was 19, I had a DUI and I, well, it's not like I had a D I earned a DUI, right? <laughs> so I, 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 I earned that DUI. Yeah. Um, and the tragic thing is I had nothing bad happened. No one got hurt. Um, besides my dignity. Um, yeah. But I had my girlfriend in the car with me at the time. So that just like kind of kind of shows where I was at mentally. Um, and uh, I was super close to getting away with it. I was literally like three blocks away from the house at the time. Um, and I'm glad I didn't get away with it um, because that and I didn't know it at the time, but I actually had a warrant for my arrest. So I was going to jail like they were going to send me 100 miles away to my oh, college wow. town where I had a warrant for my arrest. So I had time to think that night and I was like, Dude, we have got to get 
things under control. We've got to change our life. Cause I went, I walked to a mirror and uh, I looked into this mirror that was in the jail cell and I saw like no sparkle, no signs of life, nothing. Um, the things that had made me like an enthusiastic and fun person to be around, like they were like gone. And like, that scared me so much. I decided I needed to really, really work on myself. So I, I dedicated the next seven years of my life to like learning everything I possibly could about being like even 1% better of a human. Wow. Um, even just like a 10th of a percent better. And, uh, I've collected a lot of those ideas. I've implemented a lot of those, those ideas. Um, but just to portray what we were originally talking about, which is assigning meaning, a lot of people would have an event like that happen and they would, they would wear that as a badge to like that their life is messed up yep. forever. And it's like that moment where I looked in the mirrors where like you really have to focus in on, right? So it's like, there is a moment where people can either decide that this could be such a good part of a story. Yeah. Or they, right? This could either be such a good story if I'm able to overcome this or I can make this my identity and I can wear it for the rest of my life like a, like a dunce cap like, like a, just a bag of shame over my own head. Mm -hmm. And a DUI isn't the end of the world. It's uh, it hurts the wallet. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, but a lot of that, that's like a, that's where the whole victimhood culture comes into play is um, I, and it's so sad, man. I see it on TikTok all the time. I see it on Instagram a lot. And I unfollow those people immediately um, because I have, um, yeah. they'll get on and, they'll, they'll, they'll talk and they'll vent about this and this happened to me and this and this happened to me. And I'm, I'm waiting for one thing to show up in the video. I'm waiting for one thing. And it was that, that's that mirror moment. Yeah. I just, all I want to hear when I hear that online is just like, but then just two words, just, but then I decided to do this. And sometimes they don't come and I'm like, dude, got to unfollow it. Cause I don't have time for that. And it's just, um, if you've ever heard the, the entrepreneur, Andy Frisella, do you know Andy Frisella? It sounds familiar, but he has a podcast called real AF. Okay. And he actually has a policy in his company that you don't bring a problem to him without having a solution already. Wow. So you can't, you can't go up to him and be like, boss, we have a manufacturing problem. Like things are stopped in Illinois. You gotta have that solution. Yeah. You have to be like, I already talked to the guy. It's going to get solved on Monday. That's really cool. And I wish more people had that, that mentality, you know, account lot, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, <laughs> accountability is huge. And I think that, like you said, you know, we see it all the time on social media and people are playing the victim and they don't choose to, um, learn from their mistake or learn from what has happened. Right. Like the whole thing is like, you can learn from your past or like run from it. You know what I mean? Like there's that saying, and, and I think it's so true. So at that moment, you literally looked in the mirror, which that was such a deep and like self-understanding moment physically and mentally, like you were looking in the mirror and you realize that there's nothing like there wasn't that sparkle that you, that you used to have or wanted to have. And then you you mentally like took note of that and you decided to change. That's the, that's the most important part. Like you decided to take that change. You know, my, my self journey thing, I started when I, uh, got, we broke, like I broke up like my relationship, whatever with yeah. a significant other. And that's, <laughs> that's how it started. That and happens. that's, and, and that happens, but it was fuel. Like, the stuff that it made me do was like all good stuff that it made me do, but like, it was amazing. Like just reading and learning and it was so important. And I wanted to touch on something you said too. Uh, there's such a difference and, and I feel like you'll understand this for sure, but for people that are listening out there too, there's a difference between learning all this information and, and being on the self journey and then applying it because we can sit here and we can learn it and learn it and learn it and read and listen and watch. Yeah. But until you apply it to your life, then it's not making a difference. It's, it's good that you're doing that, but until you apply, and that's the hardest part is applying it. Right. Yeah. I got a term. So it's, it's uh, one of the, one of the best or one of the 
greatest things about the human mind is labeling, right? Because then you can identify it and see it. Mm -hmm. um, what I call that is shelf development. It's shelf? where people are like, yeah, shelf development, right? Shelf so like the idea of like acquiring all these books and then never, never doing anything. You're just, you have, you have a yep. really nice library, but you don't apply any of the things. Um, and I forget who this quote is from, but it's um, ideation without execution is the sport of fools. So wow. people say that, that have, say that again, say that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say that again, bars. Um, bars. Ideation without execution is the sport of fools. So it's like the people that they have great ideas um, or they hear a great idea and they never implement anything. It's, it's, it's just foolish. It's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And I do agree that that's a, that's a big problem. It's like, a, I'm going to keep bringing up Andy Fasella because he's such a huge um, inspiration to me, but what he calls those people that um, they consume all the content and they follow Gary Vee and they, they listen yeah. to the podcasts and then they don't ever build anything or have a podcast like you or create content or add value. They're success zombies. Like they're just consuming all this content, but they never like put anything back into the marketplace in terms of value. Mm -hmm. They just, they just know a lot, you know? So um, there, yeah, there is just a certain point in a journey where you can only know so much, you can only develop yourself like so far bef before it's like, okay, now your, your turn, your, your time is to like pass on some of that information. Cause that's the natural progression of, of human generations, right. Mm. Is the passing down of wisdoms. Right. So, so, so you said that you started in, so what year or what year that'd be 2014. Cause I was arrested on August 20, August 16th, 2014, I think. So, cause it was like literally right before I went, would go back to school. Okay. So right before I went back to college, I, I was arrested. And I think I may have even missed like first day of classes or something like that. Um, and that's, that's when I made the decision. And the first book I read was, was the alchemist. If you never want to, I want to read that. I need to read uh, that. I haven't dude, yet though. Dude, I will, I will send that book to you. Cause it is, it's, it, it's an A class book. There's it's many great. books that I've read so far and that was not one of them, but I've, I've know that I need to read it because it's been talked about so much. So what was the story then in, in high school? You got hit in the knee. That was oh, like, yeah. what that <laughs> I didn't even thing. touch up on that. Yeah. Um, no. So um, I was a super, I was a super active kid. Like I always hyperactive, always had trouble sleep, like sleeping. Um, <laughs> always had trouble just sitting in my chair doing as I was told. Okay. Um, super involved in sports and all the things. And, uh, my senior year in high school, um, the cornerback at the time, um, how do I, how do I frame this? So I'll try and give a play by play. Um, like a, like a commentator, yeah. I was the defensive end at the time. Um, I had blown my assignment and the running back went right by me. So I was okay. behind, behind this guy. Um, and it would have been a horse collar tackle for sure. Cause I was behind him and I was, I was essentially going for the, ho the horse collar to stop him. The cornerback went to tackle him. The running back jumped and the cornerback hit me and his helmet hit my knee and it hyperextended my knee backwards. And I flipped over my own leg because I was planted. Dude, oh. it, was, it was gnarly. And uh, if you've ever known anyone that's torn their ACL or messed up their knee, you hear it and you know it immediately. As soon as soon as I got hit and I, I was on the ground, dude, this is going to get gross. Um, <laughs> I took off, I, uh, I, uh, I was on the ground and I was just kind of like writhing in pain. Right. And I was getting yelled at by the other uh, defensive lineman, get up, right. Get up. I tried to stand up and my leg went backwards again. Oh, dude. <laughs> gross. Right. It's almost like, it almost was like a scary movie. Right. Yeah. Um, but, um and so as soon as I felt it buckle back, I, I took my helmet off and put it off to the side and I knew my career was done. Like I knew I was out. Um, and um, I, I, they, you know, they took, put me up, they put me on the cart and they took me to the, um, to the physical training room. And they, me in the meantime, I was like, I can't feel my, my foot. I can't feel yeah. my foot at all. And they're like, Oh, that's, that's like normal. You're just in shock. Totally fine. I was like, no, no, no. I was like, I can't, I can't feel the bottom half of my leg. And uh, we went to a hospital that night and we didn't know it until like 
the next day, but like I had, I had cut a nerve, the perineal nerve in my foot or in my leg, which runs down the side of your shin. Um, so when I hyperextended my leg, it, it tore that nerve. Um, and that nerve is completely um, in charge of raising your foot. So I had what was called a foot drop. So uh, to paint a picture for, you know, those who are listening, I essentially wore a plastic sock on the bottom half of my leg um, that kept my foot in a 90 degree angle for two and a half, three years. It, it went into college. Wow. Um, and at that time, being a kid that was an a- athlete, super active, um, it felt like my entire identity had been taken away from me. So at that moment, I needed to, this is when I really began to learn the skill of like assigning meaning to your, to my life. Yeah. I was like this, uh, I felt, I fell down a pretty dark hole. I was like, Hey, I'm not an athlete anymore. That's for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, it started, started probably smoking a little too much weed. Right. Cause I was trying to cope. Yeah. Um, partying on the weekends, uh, senior in high school kind of thing. Um, and then it got to the point where I was like, dude, and this, so this is flash forward a year. I'm still in this thing. It's my freshman year of, of college. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need to, I need to get over this. I need to own this. And I hadn't worn shorts in like a year and a half, right? Two years. Oh, or wow. So. And I decided, dude, whatever. I, I, wore, I wore shorts and I decided to longboard. And I was like, I'm going to strengthen the muscles in my leg by just exposure therapy. And Did I you started, still have the, the sock on at this point? Okay. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So I started longboarding, started. Um, and then at, at a certain point, once my muscles had gotten strong enough um, and I saw a slight improvement, I, uh, I start, I took it off completely and I started like straight exposure therapy, these muscles in my legs. And to this day, I still, um, but the nerve is reconnected, which is good. Yeah. Um, but there's the muscles that I have stronger muscles in certain places and weaker muscles than I should on my right leg. Um, because my, my muscles had to, ad- new muscles had to adapt for that job of lifting the foot, mm-hmm. which was really, so that's a long story, long story short is like, I had to assign meaning that this, um, and I took it one step further past that. So like a year after that, I was like, dude, I'm going to run my first marathon. So I was okay. like, okay, from like a, a terrible leg injury from a terrible knee injury, I'm going to do something that probably shouldn't be possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, I decided to, um, run a full marathon on my 21st birthday. And, uh, so 26.2 on May 1st. Um, and I, I ran the full thing and I did it under four hours wow. and I started training for it five months beforehand. And so at that point, that really broke a lot of belief. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of belief structure for me for it's like, Hey, if I was able to do that and overcome that injury, when we really didn't know if I was ever going to, cause nerve injuries are tricky, dude. Like if you ask doctors, I'm sure. Yeah. They have no idea. Like they, they don't know what to tell for like a year and a half. We couldn't get a doctor to tell us if it was ever going to grow back normally. Um, so I was like, okay, if that happened and I was able to do that with my mind, I was like, like, what else am I pop? Like, what else could I possibly accomplish? Right. I think that really even further kickstarted the self-development thing. of like, okay, now I kind of see the power of the mind. It's like, how far can I take this? Mm -hmm. So that's where I began learning that skill set of like the things that happen to you, you can either own it and make it something positive in your life that you can wear as a badge, or you can let it destroy you. Well said. You know, bars. Bars, I wish dude. I, I wish I, I wish, yeah, I wish I had like a little, like a bop it or something. <laughs> to hit. Bop it, you know? <laughs> Bazinga. Dude, your, your life was totally flipped upside down though. So. Absolutely, know. bro, yeah. And so like, that's, that's how you, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, you handled it the way that you handled it. I mean, uh, anybody on that situation, especially if you're very active and you were playing sports and it's like, then you were going into college, like that's, yeah, that's a heavy hitter. That's, you know, change is a tricky thing in just life in general, because um, I don't know. I think a lot of people don't necessarily love it. Yeah. You know? it, yeah. It's tough. Cause it's, right? it's, it's a discomforting feeling and it's not like, I don't know, but it's so important to have that because, you know, I mean, let me ask you this then. Do you believe everything happens for a reason? 
Ooh, that's a good one. Do I believe everything happens for a reason? Um, I think I think the the most important thing is the personal reason you you, you put you put behind it. Like I, I uh, yeah. that, that goes into like the concept of fate, and it's like <laughs> I don't know who does right. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there if there is a um a, a fate if that had to happen that day. Um, looking back, I would say yes, but that's only because I am who I am now, right? Uh, so that's like the whole thing. So yeah, I, I for. Like I believe everything happens for a reason, and I do like what you kind of added in there. That's that's that that's a that's a different way to look at it. And I like it, but which yeah, part? Which like part, which part? So you were saying that like you have to put like meaning behind it. I'm butchering this now, but like meaning behind like your person, like why you yeah. like why things happen. So so let's put it let's put it this way. There probably um there probably is a certain level of fate to people's lives. Mm-hmm. But if they don't recognize that they can assign meaning behind that fate, uh, then they will let that fate destroy them. And we see that we see that all the time. It's like any, um, which will tie back into the victimhood culture thing. There is any example of someone that's gone through the same thing, if not worse, and have come out the other side better. Yeah. Yep. Which in which invalidates all excuses at that point, right? Yep. You know, so it's like, uh, yeah, there is fate. Yes, bad things happen to people. Yes good things happen to people and it destroys them look at nfl players that go bankrupt yeah what do what does that what does that particular situation mean to you is the ultimate question yeah for sure i love i love that because it's it's a different way to look at it than i have my entire life um but i think it's so important because without those things happening like your knee injury or i'm sorry your foot like getting hit in the knee like nerve And then your DUI, (laughs) like, yeah. And then your DUI, like, look at where you're at now. Yeah. Right. Like who knows Mentally, yeah. if that would have happened, like if those things didn't happen, if you would have gotten away with that DUI, if, you know, like that's, what's so crazy about like just life in general is that, whoa, you just, you just, you just sent me down a timeline (laughs) where I never got picked up for that DUI. And, uh, to be honest with you, that probably would have ended in jail. Cause like I, uh, I was at a very delinquent at like part of my life and it was only getting worse. Right. It, it, like that usually yeah. doesn't just like absolve itself. No. So like, it, had I not like felt the, um, the long arm of the law, <laughs> it probably, it probably would have gotten much worse. So exactly. But who, who's to say that like what, when you went to jail later, if that was, you know, we can play what if all day, but you know, yeah. if you would have went to jail like later, then you would have had that realization too. I, I think that you would have obviously came to figure it out at some point. But what I'm saying is that it's a very unique and special thing to um, the things that have happened to you and how you've flipped them and made them into a positive because it's a very important thing to do in life. And I don't think a lot of people can do it. And it's so much easier to focus on um, negativity, like negative and just negativity in general. It You're takes- hardwired for it. We yeah, absolutely hardwired to see it. You know, it takes training. It takes training yep. of the mind to be like, okay, well, that's the obvious negative outcome, but what's the positive? Mm-hmm. What's the positive to this thing? How can this serve me? Because it's very similar to you, how you said, you know, a uh, girl, like, right, relationship. And yep. it, it sent you down this personal development thing, uh, dude, same. And it's like, um, I, I even made a video about this twice in my life. I've had um, ex girlfriend, and this is around the same time because I've, okay. I've been pretty, um, eh, I wouldn't say pretty quiet. Um, around the same time when I first started my self development journey, right? I, uh, I had two girlfriends around that time that told me at the same was, time. No, 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 no. I was, <laughs> I was never like that. Um, yeah. But they told me they, they told me just flat out I was not good enough for them. In the in the crap part, the shit part was that they were right in the moment. Wow. You yeah. Know? And when you hear something like that you know, from someone that you, that you've been dating or that you're close with, it hits. And oh, it's yeah. like, you can either accept that. You can either do the immature thing at that moment. We're just like, you know, F that B, right. Yeah. Like just, she doesn't know what you talk about, man. I'm, I'm, I'm what's up. Um, or you, you can own that, take that as feedback and be like, what are they talking about? I should probably do some self-discovery. I should probably go off into the woods and journal and, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. things like that. Because uh, wow, that was you know point. 
pointed, um, but it's those events that it's breakups, it's tragic events, it's uh, it's uh, personal injury, it's people dying uh, close to you that really, those are the events that will wake you up and put you into a higher level um, mm -hmm. of consciousness if you are accepting of it. If you're not, it can easily destroy you. Yeah, for sure. For sure, dude. That that's So are there anybody, is there anybody in your life, so you had those moments, but is there anybody in your life that has helped you like and directed oh. you with this stuff because hundreds hundreds dude i couldn't even begin listing them on this podcast like hundreds like and not i'm not that's not not even an exaggeration yeah. i uh because uh to continue that story got a dui went into um i knew one success principle at the time we're just going to go into the story i'm excited yeah. I, I don't get a chance to tell this story often um one and two <clears throat> um a new one success principle that was you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. That was like yep. the only thing I knew that was like close to like a wisdom. Right. And I was mm -hmm. like, I looked around and I was like, I'm literally the kingpin of all this mischievous activities. Like all these mischievous activities, they happen um, at my house. They happen when I'm around. Wow. And uh, yeah. And I was like, dude, not only for my benefit, do I need to leave, but for the people around me, I need to leave. Because I, I, I was the one throwing the parties. I was the one providing alcohol, things like that, you know? Dude, that had to be tough to make that realization. Yeah, that I was like, like I'm, I'm hurting other people. Yeah, I'm gasoline for a bunch of fires. Yeah. Wow. So um, I, I, I went back to college and I was like, okay, we need to, we need to, we need new people. We need new people completely. And what I did is I went through a list of five people. I wrote down five, five names um of like the the people i felt were doing the best that i knew of and there are a lot of people i graduated with high school one guy went to stanford i knew i couldn't i didn't have the grades to transfer mm -hmm. um, another guy was studying to become an astronaut at usc i was like okay can't really change majors uh and, and surround myself by smarter people um, <laughs> i definitely don't have the mind to be an engineer um and then there was uh and then there was this guy that he uh he was in a sales program in my college and he was going abroad, essentially. So he was going to the East Coast and he was selling and he was actually selling door to door. So, wow. right, weird. Um, but it was an internship program where you learn to sell by doing essentially this Navy SEAL of a program um, where you'd sell door to door for 12 weeks of a summer in a different state. And I was like, okay, if I can get out of Nebraska, um, go do something that absolutely kicks my ass. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that's completely uncomfortable. Um, and I get to learn more about myself, the world and people. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So I, I, I interviewed for that internship, um, interviewed sales, sales programs, just take people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, you, you, you have a heartbeat and you can, and you can speak halfway good. All right. There I'll you take go. It. So I did that. Um, and I fell in love with sales and I learned, I love people and I love communication. Um, and I uh, actually, through that internship, by the end of it, there was about 2,000 first-year students. By the end of it, I was number seven in the world. So I actually wow. learned I was good at sales. That's awesome. Which did something good for my self-esteem as well. I was like, not only am I, right? And this goes back to assigning meaning. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, if we flash back a year before, the August before, in my mind, um, I'm a loser sitting in a jail cell. I'm not only am I harmful to myself, but I'm harmful to other people. Um, and flash forward one year from them, I was like, I'm good at something. It's not, it, uh, even, even with this, this, uh, physical deficit that I have going on, I, 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 I still ha can be good at something. Yeah. Um, and so that, um, where we were talking about was, was mentors, right. Mm -hmm. In, in every sales and from all the good ones, let's put it that way. In every sales organization in America and in the world, there's a bunch of people that know the way, show the way and go the way. And they, cause sales is a tough gig and it's a mind gig. And so there's hundreds of people at that company that, that taught me well. And then at the next sales company I worked at, there was, you know, dozens, dozens of, of people that, that taught me well. And then uh, my definition of mentorship is a little different. It's like, dude, cause it, we, we live in the digital age, which is awesome. Yep. Right. Like the, the podcasts that I listen to of people I've never met, I still consider them a mentor. Oh yeah, me too. 
right? They're still a mentor. I, if they're in my ears every day or like you know, yeah. on a pretty frequent basis, like that's a mentor of mine. If I consume their content on YouTube, that's a mentor of mine. So it's like no man is, is self-made and by, and I'm not even close to like reaching my full potential. That's actually a big portion no. of the, yeah. of the channel name is like, um, you can't really be off your game with a, with a, with a tag name like that. Right. You know, yeah. cause then that just makes you a hypocrite. So yeah. um, there is, there's a reason why I made that my tag name. I was like, okay, what's something that can paint me into a corner, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and I was like, dude, F potential. I was like, yeah, it's pretty bold. Let's do it. Um, dude, no one is self-made. No one. I don't so, know if you have a follow-up question with that, yeah. Yeah. So I was gonna say, like, what do you what do you mean by that then? Like elaborate yeah. on the on the self-made then. So um it's just like anyone I can't think of a single person that I've and I've I've been lucky enough to meet a lot of um a lot of millionaires with just like talking to them through either sales conversations or I've worked with them or I've worked under them. Mm -hmm. Um, not a single one would claim that they're self-made all of them have had people that have fed into their heart, their mind, their body, their soul, their marriage that helped it, that helped along the way, yeah. you know? And it's like, and if you say you're self-made, but you have a company of a hundred people, you're a <laughs> shitty leader. Yeah. Even yeah, right? cause you, you've disobeyed one of the biggest principles, which I talked about in my, how to win friends series, which is you give away credit. You have, you deflect it. If you're, if you're the leader, if you're the spearhead on a project, it wasn't me, dude. Look at all these people. Look at all these people that helped out. You know, mm -hmm. Jeremy did a great job here. Sarah did that. So it's no no great man or woman that I've ever met um, is is a self made person. That's you know? that's a very cool realization. I've never I've never thought about that, but you're so right on that because yeah, no one is ever coming up on their own. Like they're always I'm I'm self made. I'm gonna be self made. That like kind of motivation, and it's not necessarily like you want that's the thing like you want other people to help you like that's how we learn that's how we grow is being told you know we can get compliments but that doesn't do much for us like like criticism like that's how we grow that's how we learn and yeah so i like that a lot um yeah, you feedback. did feedback yeah yeah criticism feedback is... and feedback and it's i think one of the biggest things is learning who to listen to and what's just noise yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a, a huge one. That's a very big, do you have any pointers on that at all? <sighs> yeah. So, um, I'm, you know, cause I started just making con I started, um, showing myself right on, on, on TikTok just two months ago. So I started, I had to learn a framework for dealing with this, right. Cause people will give you feedback that is unsolicited. Um, like, uh, the style of the style of my, for those that are listening, I haven't seen the videos, the style of my self-development is I usually I'll have like my, even my, my feet on the desk while I'm recording. So it's very yeah, laid, yep. laid back. It's not, it's not suit and collar self-development as a lot of it is. Um, that's someone that's like, do you, can you take your feet off? It's like really, really, you know, hurting the message, trying to understand <laughs> you. And I looked and they're not even following me. And I'm like, why would I like, yeah. and so, I was, so that was one thing I was like, Hey, this person has no skin in the game. Why would I even listen to their feedback in the first place? So I just yeah. commented back. No, thank you with the praying hands. Right. No, um, but I think the best framework is um, people that know the way, show the way and go the way that are in alignment with things that you want to accomplish. Like, um, right. So I, I heard this from a good friend of mine, just one of the hundreds I was just talking about IDP identify, duplicate and perfect. So you find people, you identify people that have done the things you want to do, or they are, they're being the person you want to be, or they have the things you want to have, which are the three categories be, do, have. So those three things, um, you identify those people, you duplicate what they are doing, and then you perfect their system. Wow. Or you, you perfect it around you. So it's when it comes to like feedback, if they don't, if they're not being who you want to be down the line, if you're not doing the things you want to be doing, if they don't have the things that you want to have, take it with a grain of salt, right? Um, and I say with a grain of salt, not, not disregard it completely because um, most people's moms and dads, they don't do the things that they want to do, but do you, that doesn't mean be an asshole, right? Yep. You can't just be, I'm not going to listen to you because you don't, you don't have a pilot's license and you don't 
you don't yeah. live a digital nomad life like I want to. And it's like, no, that's rude, bro. Like most people won't, but like, just take it with a grain of salt. Just be like, okay, well, there may be some validity to what they just uh, told me, but at the end of the day, are they being, doing, and having the things that I actually want from my life? And then that's the, that's the ruler to test it against. So yeah. if I had to give one thing in terms of like, what's crit- what's feedback versus what's criticism, it's like, uh, ident- identify, duplicate, and perfect. Like find those people, keep that group pretty small. And those are the people that you listen to. That's dude. How amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Like legit. IDP, that, Cade. That's, that's, all. that's, that's so awesome. And have you heard of David Meltzer? Yeah, bro. David Meltzer. So he's actually a really good friend with Andy Frisella. So there you go. Uh, oh, connection. Okay. Yeah, so boom. David, what did what did David Meltzer say? That I just triggered that. So yeah. So he talks um quite a bit about this, but he's saying like you can't if, he goes, if I would have went to my parents, and Gary V, I think, touches on this too, but like he goes, if I would have went to my mom and said, Hey, I want to like invest in Google, she's like like the internet that's not a thing like whatever he would have missed out on that opportunity right and so that's kind of like an um in a way to explain what you're talking about too and so you know it's the same thing like you said too everything is digital now and so you know our parents or people's uh, like even you know generations back and generations forward it's going to be different and so we have to like I mean, adapting is so key just in general anyways, but yeah, to, to understand, look, I love this person or I like this person. I care about them, but they do not hold value necessarily in that part of it. In this category. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's what I'm I'm trying to say is grains of salt. It's like in this category, is there validity to what they just said? And so, right. and so that's and the world so is changing so fast that it makes that game hard. Right. It's yeah. You know, cause like, dude, I, uh, let's put it even this way. Right. So you, Tim, Tim Ferriss four hour work week. Right. Dude, there's a difference between old rich and new rich. Right. Yep. Cause like old, old rich is like hustle 80 hours a week, build an empire, retire when you're 65. And then new rich in my mentality is like, find something that you love so much. And that's at, at such a sustainable pace and gives you such a, sustainable lifestyle but you don't really care if you retire like you're okay with doing it until you die like you solve problems for humans until you die and there's a difference between that because i know old rich people and i can't i can't ask (laughs) them for advice on entrepreneurship no because they don't understand new rich yep in in fact they think new rich is weird the fact that i want to build a business so i can go f off in a van for two years they think that's weird, but I yep. think that's that's uh, desirable. And I can't ask old school entrepreneurs about new school entrepreneurship. So it's it's changing so fast that even that feedback system is like, oh, you just gotta you gotta be real careful. Like, are they good in this category? It has to be yep. a super specific category. You but know? you know, I like this, and I I don't necessarily I don't remember if you physically like not physically, but if you nailed this, like you said this, but exactly but finding those people are so important like you said like the three people and so find that person you know that that is obsessed with whatever it may be for you someone that is a master you know in quotation marks i think we all can learn constantly but but um a master in that task or in that performance whatever and and then go to them for advice you know like that's what, which obviously that's hard to do sometimes, but I'm just saying like, that's who we can follow. And that that's how you pick, you know, and choose and between hearing and, and really taking what your family says versus what someone else says that whole old yeah. rich versus new rich. That book is amazing. And I haven't even, I haven't finished it, but dude, I'm just now reading it. And it's, you know, seven years into the, like the whole obsessing over this stuff. Right. And I'm, yeah. I'm just kicking myself. Cause I realized I was applying like a, a lot of old school, old school, rich frameworks to what I actually want, which is like new school, rich. Yeah. Um, right. And I was like, no wonder I was like, no wonder I like, there's certain business ideas in my mind that were like uh, confused. Cause it's like, dude, I I'm super attracted to the digital nomad lifestyle. I'm not 30 yet. I've got, I got three and a half years to get there. And so I was like, dude, if I can go be a digital nomad making money online for like two years, I think that's awesome. Yeah. 
And so I, I'm really diving into the four hour work week right now. And that's the biggest thing. I'm like, dude, I really wish I would have, I would have read and digested this book sooner. So I'm yeah. glad that you're, that you're in the process of reading that too. Yeah. I'm in the process of reading that. Um, <laughs> let's okay. Let's move to 75 hard. Oh, this yeah. is a this is a challenge for everyone that doesn't know um this I, I, do you know how the challenge came about yeah um so i i, I think briefly um andy Frisella, the creator of, of 75 and i might be butchering this andy Frisella, the creator of 75 hard he um he made a challenge uh with his company employees i think or he had a certain date um, and then he was going to get down to a certain percentage of body fat. Okay. And he's, he so happened to look at the calendar and it was 75 days. Okay. So he, he developed through those 75 days, this routine, this program. Yep. And I don't know if he actually hit the goal, but I think that was where the inception of 75 hard. Happened. Okay. Okay. So that's how, So for, for those of you that do not know, that was a great explanation. And then also here are the, the rules for the 75 days. Yeah. Yeah. Most of um, them, yeah follow a diet right and it doesn't say a specific diet so just follow no, a diet non, non-specified yeah non-dictated work out twice a day for at least 45 minutes and one without side no matter yep. what right drink a gallon of water per day read 10 pages of non-fiction each day take a progress picture each day yep perform a random act of kindness is that each day as well that's actually so that's a part of phase phase three which is like okay. a, it's there's a calendar program where it's like a it's yep. a year long program and that's a later part of, um, okay. that's not a part of it yet, but that's just a good practice. Everyone should do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. And then, uh, take a five minute cold shower. Is that like another, No, that's also phase three. Yeah. Phase three. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So I wasn't sure, but yeah. So, and Mitch, you did this. Yeah. 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 And yeah, you so did it for, I, I will say, I'm doing I respect it right now. It. I'm Again, doing it right now. Just yeah, I'm on day 28, baby. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Like I, I'll, I'll provide some backstory on that. So, um, yeah. The, so the rules uh, for 75 part for those that want to get started, uh, two workouts a day, both 45 minutes long. One of them has to be outside no matter what. Okay. Um, a diet, stick to it, not dictated. Next rule. Um, so third rule, um, no alcohol or cheat meals. Oh, that's right. Fourth, yeah. Yep. Fourth rule, drink a gallon of water a day. Fifth rule, read 10 pages. Uh, of a book has to be personal development has to be something that can progress um, your life or career forward. Okay. Can't be um, where the red fern grows. Right. Yeah. And then the last one is take a progress photo every day. Um, doesn't have to be posted on social. That's a huge misconception. So okay. it, yeah. this is not, an, it, this is not an Instagram fitness challenge. This is no. a mental toughness. It's an iron man for your brain. That's the yeah. best way that Andy Frisella puts it. And that's exactly as I would describe it. So last year, 75 hard was what um, it, my misogi, which is going into another concept. Yeah. But a misogi is a Japanese word. Um, and essentially, it just means doing something so difficult once a year that the benefits of that act last the rest of the year. So it's like uh, for me, for me this year, it's running a hundred mile race. So it's like doing that one race and committing to doing that the benefits of deciding to do that will be, uh, has given me and will give me benefits for the rest of the year. And it's the same thing for 75 hard because most people have not been consistent with anything for 75 days in their adult life ever. Mm -hmm. No. And it's, it's so hard to do. It took me six attempts before I actually finally got all the way through it. Cause really? if you mess up, I didn't say this part. If you mess up, you have to start back at day number one. And so that, that is 75 hard in a nutshell. So, so why, what, why, what, why? what made you do this? Dude. Um, I would say, well, yeah, let's just live wide open. Um, I would say I, uh, I would say I was very, very strong. I like, um, you remember the whole ideation, um, ideation and execution is a sport of fools. Yeah. Dude, I, li I lived like that for a very long time where okay. I would have, all these great ideas. Um, and, uh, I, I really struggle with, the uh, the boots of it, just putting boots in the ground and doing, doing the things. Mm. So it got to the point where I, not only did I not trust myself, but the people around me stopped trusting myself, uh, trusting me. 
because I would have so many ideas and I wouldn't execute on any of them mm. that it's like, what was there to prove, right? My words were just that. They were just words, yeah. right? So I had lost trust with myself so much that I was like, I need a complete revamp of my own word, right? Um, and I was definitely one of those people that I had not been consistent with anything for 75 days before in my adult life. Um, so I was like, okay, hey, this isn't something I necessarily want to do. This is something I have to do. Because like I, in that back room right there, I have a vision board of things that I will do. And it doesn't mean anything if I lack consistency. That's just, that's, that's it, dude. It's like, um, so it wasn't about a progress photo, although I did drop about 35 pounds. It wasn't about um, getting in better shape um, for, you know, Instagram or anything like that. It was literally, I wanted to fall back in love and fall back in a state of trust with myself. Yeah. And when I said I was going to do something, I knew I was going to do it because I was able to sustain vision over at least a 75 day period. And dude, to be honest with you, I think that is the plight of you're technically Gen Z. I think I, yep. I'm technically millennial. That's okay. the plight of our generations is that people have such a short attention span. They can't commit to something long enough to actually see it through. Dude, it took me 60 days to get to a thousand followers on TikTok. The reason why most people don't get to a thousand followers on TikTok, or a lot of them don't, um, or even let's put it this way. There's a lot of people that get to uh, very high numbers on TikTok and then they don't ever sustain it mm -hmm. because they don't, they aren't consistent. They aren't consistent with posting. Right. And so it's like, if, if you, if I, if people that are listening, if you can, uh, let me talk to you. If you can develop the skill of consistency person that is listening to this podcast, you have a superpower. You have a competitive advantage in the marketplace for the rest of your life because you can say yep. that you're going to do something and you know, you know, you will do it. You know, you have what it takes to, to see it through. What you're hitting right on the head is accountability. Yeah. Personal accountability. Yes. And it's so important because consistency is, is key. You know, you, you said that, but Accountability is so important because like you said, you were not following through and showing up for yourself and yeah. others. Dude, it hurt, right? It hurt. It's when it's those moments that you got to be self-aware and you're like, wow, I'm really like, um, dude, honestly, that's, that's right. That's kind of like where the potential thing came from. Right. It was, mm -hmm. I was like, cause that I kept hearing that it's like, Mitch, dude, all the potential in the world, you can't see things through though. Yeah. And it's like, twist yep. the knife kind of thing, you know? And I was like, dude, you got to fix that. got to fix it. And I knew of one program at the time that could do it. Um, and that's 75 hard. And dude, this is, uh, this is a real story. Um, I have, uh, did I interrupt you? Hold up. No, you're good. I was just okay. going to say that accountability yeah, no. is like a really important because it, it makes us do the things that we said that we're going to do. And what that does for us is just amazing things in general like i'm i'm really trying to think but i know that when you hold yourself accountable for the things that you say that you're going to do and the and the acts that you say you're going to do it you you look at yourself in a better light because you're like hey i accomplished this you say hey, i'm going to make my bed today and you make yeah. your bed you already feel like you accomplished something and that's what's yeah. important it's like so having those senses but yeah anyways continue on bro you know you literally you get it you understand it it's stacking wins yes it, it, that's that's what you're talking about it's stacking wins um because you making your bed that's a win right um each of those things i just talked about that are rules in 75 hard those are wins so when yep. you collect enough wins over a long enough period of time it's a natural thing to fall back in a state of trust with yourself. And not only that, um, 75 hard creates momentum. It creates massive momentum in your life because you just realize, um, well, if I can win at all these little things for this long of a time, it's like, then just insert whatever other habit it is. Right. So like, here's mm -hmm. an example. Um, pretty much every day now, um, I'd say probably most days, um, I, uh, I study e-commerce for 30 minutes. I study, um, agency like video, video production agency for 30 minutes. And I study digital advertising, paid media for 30 minutes. Right. And it's like, 
and I have a I have a nice streak of that going that those that education going because of the skills from 75 hard of being able to crystallize long term goals into little wins every day. Wow. Yeah. Which is that's where people that's where dreamers get messed up, man. Is like yeah. they they think all the long term and they can't pull it into what do I need to do today? What yep. do I need to do in this next hour? You know? That's so important. So why uh <clears throat> Why Maslow's hierarchy of needs? So this is a very yeah. important thing. And for the people that do not know and understand it, uh, I'm sure Mitch will give us a breakdown of it. But I noticed that this is a huge thing in your social media just in general. And yeah. I mean, I remember hearing it. And it's so important because in order to get to the next stage, and you have to take care of these certain stages. So why don't you dive into that? I just want to yeah. know why it was so important to you in that aspect, like of or like how it's resonated with you for all this time. Yes. And uh, I one more thing on 75 hard before we jump onto that. Because yep. yep. I will I uh um I'm I mean I'm I'm stoked to talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um I had a guy <clears throat> about two weeks ago reach out to me, he's a filmmaker in Austin. Um and he DM'd me because we followed each other on, because I love this content. Um, and like I told you, that's like, what I'm going into is I want to have a video production agency. If I haven't said that, then that's like the skill set I'm learning okay. right now. Yeah. So that's a part of the F potential thing, which is like part of, in my mind, uh, for me to fulfill my potential, I need to be a business owner. Um, and I've known that for a really long time. I've put it off for a very long time. And I'm now entering into that season where I'm making it happen. That's awesome. Um, so he is doing IDP. He is doing the thing I want to do. He reached out to me and there was this mutual trade because he was like, Mitch, I've been seeing your Maslow's hierarchy of needs series on self-esteem. And I was wondering if you do coaching or consulting. And I was like, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> and the reason why is because I wouldn't feel comfortable co uh, charging for something like that with no testimonies. Yeah. Right? I, it's just not in, in alignment with where I'm at right now. Um, and also just the one-on-one, -on -one, the one-on-one -on -one model in terms of scalability for time, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't really work out. No, not for what I want. Um, yeah. so I told that to him, I was like, but I'm willing just to be friends. So like, can we just hop on a zoom call and you can tell me what you know, and I tell you what I know. And I told him, and this is where he's at. He was 278. Um, when he got on the call, right. This is just two weeks ago, mind you. Um, okay. he was like. I'm experiencing low self-esteem. I procrastinate all the time. Um, he, he's, yeah, he's like, I'm in a state of low trust with myself. I sent him a questionnaire. He filled it out so I could just get some, an idea of where he was at. Yeah. Um, sent it to him. He filled it out. And I was like, dude, and I was actually questioning if I should even like hop on a call with him. Um, but I read the questionnaire in terms of like his answers. And I was like, no, I definitely can help this. I can definitely help this out. And so wow. it got me super excited, super stoked got on the call. First thing I said, I was like, dude, you might tell me to fuck off. Like, cause what I'm going to tell you is not going to be easy. You might be like, <laughs> yeah. I have two kids. I have a, I have a six figure video business. Um, there's no way I can do this. I was like, you need to do 75 hard and you need to do something called the power list. And so I described him 75 hard and the power list is super simple. I'll throw it at you really quick. I remember um, seeing that. Yep. Have you seen it? Yeah. Okay. But you can explain it for other people. Yeah. For the viewers, bro. Um, it is the power list. Instead of thinking in terms of time management, it's more energy management. It's task management. Uh, so at the beginning of each day, you write down five things that are critical tasks that will move you forward towards your goals. If you do all five of those things, you can stop for the day and do whatever you want. Okay. But if you don't, it's a loss for the day. If you do the things, it's a win for the day. So um, I told him, if you want to learn, if you want to you know, stop procrastinating. You need to implement the power list in your life. Cause my idea is you probably have a full Google calendar. You probably have some kind of schedule that's filled to the brim. Yeah. And it's this never ending litany of things to do. Right. And you need to stop thinking in terms of the busyness and think in terms of what are the things that are going to move me forward a 10th of a percent today. Right. So, um, I told him that anyway, long story short, didn't know if he was going to do it. It was radio silent for a week. He called me yesterday and he was like, dude, I'm down 17 pounds. And wow. I was like, Bro. And then so like 75 hard powerless are not my technologies. Those are both uh, Andy Frisella's technologies. Yeah. But um, it's the real deal. Viewers, if you're in a state of low trust with yourself, if you, uh, if you procrastinate things, 
if uh, any of the things I've talked about that it sounded like I was afflicted with where like people don't really trust what you say because you're a total dreamer. You need to do 75 hard. You need to do the power list. You need to implement it tomorrow. You need to, you need to go online, Google search both those things. Yeah. And, and you need to not be a success zombie. You need, to, you need to go and put some footwork into researching what it takes and then doing those things. If those are problems you have, if not, then dude, just keep doing you. Like, <laughs> Still, I, I think that 75 hard challenge is, you know, when I've, I've seen it across my, you know, social media too. And I always thought like, yeah, like it's a great, you know, great challenge, whatever. But you made it seem like such a more abundant challenge, like the things that you can get out of it. And that's what I yeah. really like about it. Yeah, because like, there's a lot of sound bites, right? Like a lot of them, it's 75 hard. It just shows them pictures in the gym. Yeah, it's not yep. what it's for. It's not a fitness no. challenge. Dude, it's all between here. Um, yeah. The physical is a byproduct of the transformation that you've made mentally and emotionally through that program. You live in North Dakota. I live in Nebraska. My yeah. second workout is in three degrees sometimes, yeah. right? Because yep. I'm in day 28, right? Like I'm into this. Like, so yeah. it's been cold, bro. I don't need to tell you. Nope. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's like there's freezing. happens to you when you set it, when you set a pillar in your life that I'm going to do something difficult every day for the sake of difficulty sake, you know, challenge so, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's what important. was the, what were you, you're talking about Maslow's. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to dive into that a little bit. Um, we don't have a bunch of time left, but I do want to talk about, uh, Ma- so like what, what, how is that? been such an important thing to you and and like i just want to know how it's resonated so long because it's been part of your you know your whole yeah, persona bag basically <laughs> so it's going to be more funny than anything um <laughs> <laughs> so when i was new to tiktok right so like within the first two weeks all i heard you know is from some guru um <laughs> is that i need to have a series um and i was like dude there's so much i could talk about because self-development is so wide right yeah and i was like oh i don't know um, and, uh, I knew about Maslow's hierarchy of need. You're going to laugh at this. It's like, it's literally no deeper than this, but, um, I may, I actually probably say I made a mistake with, um, Maslow is in this <laughs> respect, um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs for people that don't know, I actually have it next to my desk. I'll just read it off. There um, we go. Perfect. So let's see. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs is, this, uh, it's essentially a framework where, uh, it's, this, it's like, think of a pyramid. And it's like on the base pyramid is physiological needs. That's breathing, food, water, sex, sleep, homeostasis, and excretion. The next one up is safety, which is pretty self-explanatory. Love and belonging is the next tier. Self-esteem followed by self-actualization. So basically the framework just says that it is man's nature to want to self-actualize. And the definition by Abraham Maslow is a person's motivation to reach his or her full potential. Um, a person's basic needs must be met before self-actualization can be achieved. So how I fell upon Maslow's hierarchy of needs on my TikTok channel page was I was just, it was more of just an exploration thing because I didn't know what I wanted to talk about actually. And I didn't okay. want to niche, niche down. Yeah. So, and here's the mistake. I made it a hundred part series. And that is so <laughs> long, dude. That's so many videos. So I started that like December 26th. And here we are. It's March 20th, bro, or something like that. March 18th. And I'm still doing it. I'm on, I'm on 76, part 76. So I'm almost done. Dang. I'm kind of kick, I'm kind of kicking myself. Um, not because I don't love it. And I actually have a, a project that's like deep in Maslow's right now. Um, but and I'll talk about that in a second. But it's just uh I I it probably should have been a 50 part series. Um because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I'm going really <laughs> If you're on TikTok, F potential, baby. Um, yeah, I'm going yep. very nitty gritty. And it's essentially the foundation of my entire channel. Cause it's like, if there's something I've learned about self-development, it's I probably touched on it in, in, the, in, you know, a hundred minutes yeah. of, of Maslow hierarchy of needs series. Um, That's but um, yeah, bro, it, it was more like an accident that you've seen it so much. Um, but the, uh, here's what I'm doing with Maslow's now. I fell in love with this concept so much. And uh, one of the reasons I decided to do Maslow is because it's so wide. I figured that at some point I would fall on one of the concepts that I could key in on. And then that would be my niche. Yeah. But it actually did the opposite. I was like, I, I became the niche instead. And it's like, I then, get, I've kind of set myself free. I just get to talk about all the topics instead of talking about one topic. Cause like, I, yeah. 
if you look at a lot of TikTok creators, they're like, my thing is relationships. And I'm like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to just talk about, cause that looks miserable, bro. Yeah. You know, the it's, creators that talk about one thing all the time. I'm like, no, 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 it, no. It would be hard. I think it's, I think it's also really important, but, um, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I like that you didn't put yourself in that box though. Yeah. Um, and what's, what's actually uh, been birthed out of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is um, the, actually this hat, this hat that I'm wearing. So um, I had an idea. I actually had this idea a few years ago um, with, I'm not, it's not up here, whatever. So I have, um, I was going to start a, 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 an apparel brand okay. um, two years ago. Um, and it was just going to be the word potential with a line crossed through it. Right. And I've actually ended up making that, that merchandise and it's on, it's in, in my LinkedIn bio in, oh, sweet. Um, in my TikTok. But the idea of it was not just uh, like a, an income, right? So um, what that, what Mas, it's now a company, I've actually LLC this, it's, it's Mas, the Maslow company. Okay. Um, it's an apparel brand and a certain uh, 11%, because I don't like them. I didn't want to do just flat 10. 11% of net profits goes towards equipping the next generation of creators. And what, nice. that, what that means right now is my first project is I want to put, I want to donate a series of EOS R cameras to my old high school. So, th- you know, high schoolers that they have an idea that, you know, I really love photography and videography because, bro, as someone that um, knew probably about five years ago that I wanted to be a creator, but I didn't have the, the let's say I didn't have this four thousand dollars to spend on gear yeah I don't need to tell you right like content gear is expensive bro right yeah so I was like if I can fill that need um while also creating some sick some some sick apparel to wear around um people can't see this hat if they're listening to the podcast but it's like very 1970s like uh groovy style text on on a on a corduroy hat yeah I like if I can yeah bro I was like if I can if I can equip creators um, and, and put cameras in their hands, put DJ mixing equipment in their, in their hands, mainly in high schools in America, I was like, dude, that'll be a super fulfilling project for me. And the eventual uh, dream with this, because once again, forever games with forever people, you know, I brought that up to you um, before we started the podcast, mm-hmm. the forever game with Maslow Co is I eventually want to, this apparel brand to grow to where I'm developing maker spaces in America. Do you know what a makerspace is? Maker, no. Is that like where you make content or? No, bro. Um, but it could be. Um, makerspaces are like places that have their their um the Nebraska Innovation Studio is a really good example of what I'm looking to create all around America. So that would be worth a Google search for those that are listening. Uh, the Nebraska Innovation Studio. So it's a place that has like 3D printers and have workshops to teach you how to do laser etching oh, wow. and, uh, and woodworking and metalworking and screen printing. And it's this place where creators can come together and they can work on their project, even prototype inventions that they have. Because I'm a firm believer that a lot of the problems that are happening in America will be solved by entrepreneurs and creators. Yeah. So I'm like, if I can, if I can make those spaces, because that the Nebraska Innovation Studio, when I was in college, was one of, when I was introduced to that concept, I was like, this should be everywhere. I was like, high schoolers should have access to this. Dude, for like, sure. Yeah. I was like, if, and if there's classes where um, high schools can learn photography and videography, like just locally, like it's a YMCA, but it's for creators, dude. That's the I best want, way I could put it. I want I was both like, dude, of those. I want, the, I want to make that. Yeah. I want both of those links. Uh, and yeah, I'll yeah. put them in the description for the people because I, I think that's super important. You're, I want your mer- I want that because the pro- the proceeds go to that, which is super important. Uh, and I also I like that a lot. I like that. No, I was gonna ask you for your address and your phone number. Like we're friends now. Yeah, like so. I um, agree. I, like, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you some 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 gear, and uh, yeah, you're gonna be in my phone now, and we're gonna. Heck yeah, and dude. If you ever have someone that just blows you off a week, just hit me up. I'll just hop on. <laughs> I got you. Bit. I know this um, is awesome. Yeah. So that's that's a. Uh, it started off as a series and then it became like a mistake because it's too long. And, and now, and then I was like, wait, um, cause I, I kind of came upon the idea, okay. That F potential is like a really like non-marketable clothing brand. I was like, I need to make it something else. And I okay. was like, okay, I was like, Hey, Maslow, I like Maslow a lot. Yeah. Um, and if you look, if you look at my bio and you go to the, the shop Maslow co stand button, um, you'll, you'll see some of the projects and, um, 
it's like if there's like seven items right now but one of one of them is like a is the f potential uh logo and then there's the Mazel logo and stuff like that so it's very much work in progress but like i said it's a forever game like i will yep. uh, if yeah it's it's it, really quick explain that yeah, sorry, forever dude, games I, I just go you're I'm like good. Energizer Bunny Man, my bad. I like it a lot. I like your energy. It's it's I, it's super important. I hope all the listeners love this podcast because I know that I really do. But explain that Forever Games versus Forever Days or with Forever Days, whatever that. Yeah, was. yeah. So um, let's put it this way. So I did. I actually ended up doing door to door sales for seven years. I learned pretty quick that although it was a great thing to cut my teeth on, uh, per se, yeah, in terms of like skill acquisition that it was not something I wanted to do forever. So within this last year, um, after 75 hard is really when I gained the confidence mm-hmm. to go out and do my own thing. Um, I, uh, I decided that I'm gonna implement two, two things. So, and I will give them to the viewers. The first one is if it's not a fuck yes, it's a fuck no, okay? So sorry to cuss if nope. anyone's, if, anyone's, uh, <laughs> if yeah, anyone yeah. is sensitive to such things, but if it if it doesn't light you up, if it's not like a full body yes, like when I saw Kate Kate's email to hop on a podcast, I was like full body yes, we're gonna hop on a podcast. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the first thing. And it, it um and if somebody asked me to do something, I'm like, eh, it's a no. It's a it's it's such a easy way to manage your energy. Yeah. As in, bro, in college I got involved with a lot of like clubs and activities and stuff. I probably just should have said no on. And then I ended up being super spread out. It was super stressful. Right. So I implemented that idea around that time in college. The second thing is play long-term or play forever games with forever people. Right. So, um, content creation, the F potential channel, um, is a forever game for me. It's, I will continue to provide insight, value, self-development, the mission statement I told you earlier. Um, I will do that until I die. That's a forever game. The beautiful things about when we individually as people, viewers are listening, play forever games, you attract forever people. They will find you. That's one thing I've learned about this TikTok journey because there's been a lot of people that are like-minded that saw my content and it, and it, and it vibed with them. And I asked with them and they asked with me. And it's, and it's a really cool way of finding your tribe that's the beauty of social media is to use it, not let it use you. Look at this Bam. now. Look Here's at, Kate, look, bro. Here's yeah. Kate, bro. Like, are, look, like I was literally scrolling on TikTok and that that's what I saw. And I wanted to talk to you because you seem like-minded and that's what made us together. So, wow, that's awesome. Right. So that's, that's the basic concept is like, um, instead of doing what I did, which I think it is important, I will say this. I think it is important to put yourself at the, around the age of 19, 20, to put yourself in a really difficult environment um, to at least learn the skills of communication. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm so strong about that. Cause like through my door to door journey, I knocked on at least 25,000 doors, talked to so many people, sat down with uh, closed, closed a lot of business and communication is a master skill, bro. Like um, I, I don't want to sound old or something like that, but I feel like <laughs> there's this regress of communication skills, right. That are going down. Yeah. That's going down like interpersonal skills. Right. Um, and I might be completely wrong about that. Um, but the, uh, it'll always be a competitive advantage in the marketplace to, um, be a strong communicator. Oh yeah. Period. Great period, advice. Right? So besides that, once you acquire the skill of communication, you should go do the thing that lights you up and you should really find a way to make it work. You should build the plane in the air. You know, like just yes. no one knows what they're doing, bro. But when you find someone that seems like they know what they're doing and you kind of vet them, you should buy their course or you should like learn from them. Yeah, It's the IDP thing, right? So um, do things that light you up that you feel like you could do forever. Maslow is one of those because I fully believe in equipping creators. I know that um, I know that I might not change the world, but if I can help enough creators get the tools that they need, one of them will and i will have played a small part in it um and then f potential because like dude just passing of wisdoms it's like if people don't take it upon themselves to pass down good ideas and those ideas die and it's like uh it's super important to pass on wisdom um, when you can and be a mentor um if you've ever seen i'm dude i like to ramble but yeah i'm like i'm like a machine gun Uh, yeah one one one-liners but I will, I'll end on this and we'll go into the next thing or the la- wrapping up. Or okay. um, I have this 
I have this analogy of a monkey in a barrel is the most way is the way to live the most fulfilling life. Um, do you remember that those games as a kid or that toy? Yeah, yeah, kind of. If you remember the shape of it, right? So they have a hooked arm up and they have a uh-huh. hooked arm down. And so it's it's an obvious analogy, right? It's like the most fulfilling life is when you have one hand in front of you to the person that's in the next spot and you're in the batter's box. Yeah. And then and then you have one hand in the dugout and you're bringing the, the next person up with you. That's the most fulfilling life is because you're continuing the energy. That person's feeding you energy and you're spitting it through them, right? It's like an electric wire. You that's don't want to cut. That's a great cut. analogy. Yeah. And that's where self, that's where success zombies mess up, bro. For real. For real. It's because what are they doing? They're holding on to this and they're just the ground wire. Yeah. They're not, they're not connected to anyone else. So all that energy just gets stored into them and they're like, why do I feel unfulfilled? And it's like, well, it's probably because you're not adding value. Have you thought about that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Bars. <laughs> Bars, dude. Again. Um, Mitch, this has been amazing. Uh, Bro, I mean, so I feel like we can, yeah, we're definitely gonna have to do another one because we can't cover everything in this, but I want to move to the end questions. There's three end questions. Yeah. Three end questions. Okay. So I'm gonna have you answer them in a sentence or less. Um, it's not too time conforming. So like whatever, but, um, the first question, are you, are you ready for these three questions? Well, I'm, I'm fully prepared for these three questions. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Number one, what is a daily habit that has changed your life? What's well, a daily habit that's changed my life? Journaling, 100%. Morning journaling, morning right. pages. They're so, super important. I'll plug something. It's called the High Performance Planner by Brendan Burchard. High okay. Performance Planner. You can find it on Amazon. I think they're about 17 bucks. Um, they come with pre, pre-written questions. You fill them out. And uh, then there's like a space where you can do gratitude journaling or you can write your affirmations if you want. But that is uh, that with a cup of coffee is the way I start my day every single day. Because if you've ever heard the quote, um, journaling is just praying on paper. Yeah. 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 That's that's just that's just I've never heard that before, but I like that a lot. And I and I journal as well. So I like that one. Number two, how would you consider your purpose in life right now? We kind of already said that, but I love you to say it again. Okay. Um, like, uh, just restating what my mission statement is. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. Okay. Um, cause, uh, I was going to say, so there's like the, there's the mission statement and then there's like what it actually looks like in the current moment, which right now my, to achieve my mission, it looks like a lot of learning. Yeah. Like I said, a lot of courses, a lot of YouTube, uh, YouTube university, baby. Um, <laughs> yep. a lot, a lot of podcasts and people that are in the creator economy, just learning how to best get out my messages. Um, but just to reiterate, dude, my mission in life is to use, utilize my, um, to inspire and lead others towards the life they truly yearn for through conversations worth having ideas worth sharing and a life well lived. And I feel like if the world adopted that mentality and everyone had that mentality, the world would be a better place. And I'm not saying I'm like the epitome of a good example. Cause I'm not, dude, I, I fuck up all the time. Um, I love that though. So much. as long as people have a North star that is, uh, that is pointed at, like, I want to be better because it makes everyone else better. Yeah. It's what, um, it's what, uh, Matthew McConaughey calls egotistical utilitarianism or it's okay. like, yeah, it's fun, egotistical, right? So yeah. inward utilitarianism is like function, right? So it's, mm. um, it's being selfish. So you can give, if, so, if people adopted that mentality, then they wouldn't be pouring out of an empty cup. They wouldn't be sad. They wouldn't be miserable. Yeah. Um, Cause they're just constantly that barrel in a the monkey. They're just constantly letting the flow of energy, the flow of life flow through them into the next human being, which is what we all are. Turn off the news. Um, I've met enough people to tell you that I have to plug this. Cause if I was to have a Ted talk, it'd be about this concept. Yeah. I've met enough people in my life through door to door that, I know without a doubt that 99% of people, more than that, in fact, are good people. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter sexual orientation, race. It doesn't matter size, shape. None of it matters. I've met all of them. If you if you yeah. if you can think of the type of person I've met that that person before, they're good people. It's like there's this massive division. So like if I was to have a TED talk, it'd be like a highlight humanity where I'd go through different stories of different kinds of people that I've met. Okay, and I'm like. And, and the beautiful stories that I've had with them and just beautiful moments of connection in humanity and, and heart that I've had with them. And then the ending, the ending thing would just be like, 
I've ran the numbers and people are, are so much, so much more good than what is broadcasted. And it's like, dude, just like love people. Cause we're all the same. Right. Yeah. There is the exact opposite being broadcasted every day. It's disgusting. We, we started our, 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 our conversation about like, uh, with that <laughs> too. Yeah. You know? What a great but, message though. That is number three, last one. What is something, you know, that you wish others understood? Oh man, which is basically oh. everything that we talked about today, I think. But what is something that I know? So, like, I actually have this belief that I don't really know anything. <laughs> um, but I'm, I, in fact, I, uh, I like to more say that like I'm beginning to learn something because as soon as you say you know something, you like close the door to it. So, yeah, I, I usually tell people, even if I'm super well rehearsed on the topic, I'll say I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to learn this. Um, I like because words words are matter words matter a lot but bro so i want to say this um because if I, I was to have a billboard this is what would be said on it and i uh um let me first and foremost say i believe in a god and i believe a god that is loving and i want people to calm down about this because i feel like it stops a lot of people from living their best life but you shouldn't be afraid of death and the quote that I yeah. resonates with me so much, um, and I um, is is this. I'll say the quote and I'll explain it. Um, it's from Eckhart Tolle, and it's okay. death is the stripping away of everything that you are not. Wow. And so what's what's left? It's just you. It's just you, baby. And what's what's uh what about that would be scary? Is to experience the purest form of you and. At the time you die, you realize, oh, all those things that were so weighty and so heavy and so what I thought was me weren't actually me all along. And you just get, you Dude. Just get right? And if That's I, so powerful. As soon as, as, soon as you, you, you realize that, because like, no, dude, um, here's, a, here's a bar for you. Nothing hits like the truth when it's spoken. And it's like, when I hear that, I'm like, that's true. That's true. Death is the stripping away of everything I'm not. And so what would be scary about that? And the, the ironic thing is some, a lot of people are so afraid of, and this is, this is why dude, we should hop back on a podcast for another time. Cause I have a whole mortality thing that we could rant on. It'd be good. Yeah. Um, most people are so afraid of death that they never live that they, yeah. they're just, a, yep. Yep, yep. they're just a part of the walking, the walking dead. And they're never, they're, so afraid of death or ego death through what other people think of them that they never really live their fullest expression. They, they can't self-actualize. They can't because they're, they're so hung up on safety needs, yeah. which is the second rung. That's not even self-esteem, dude. You know, So they can't have full self-esteem because they're, they're still so stuck in feeling safe. Yeah. When, when you just realize there's nothing, what's the greatest consequence in most people's mind? Dying. Yeah. But when you put it in that perspective, no, it's not. Yeah. What's the greatest consequence at that point? Not becoming your full self. Yeah, not doing something that that you not, can do for sure. Not not self actualizing becomes the greatest consequence, not death. Wow, Mitch, thank you so much for jumping on here and doing that. Yeah. I, this is amazing. This is well, amazing. Thanks for having me, man. I, I I it's been it's been a privilege. It's been an honor. I've had a lot of fun. And uh, dude, just the fact that I want to give a moment of acknowledgement to you, the fact that you're 21 and you're having these conversations and you're taking initiative and you had 16 episodes so far, you are so much farther along than I was when I was 21. And I'm just excited that I've gotten a chance to connect with you and then, um, and to develop a friendship from this. Cause I'm serious. I want to be your friend. I like yeah. you. Yeah. I like you, Kate. No, I've, I appreciate everything that you've been saying. I want to be your friend too. And I, and I, I, yeah, like and it's funny because you say that because too. Well, let me finish my acknowledgement. Okay, okay, I want to okay. acknowledge <laughs> you. I want to acknowledge you because you're on such a strong path with, with being a sponge and learning and reaching out to people because it can be intimidating. I understand that, but you're doing it. And that's the most important thing. So I acknowledge you for, for being bold and, uh, and, and absorbing one of the things that I think is one of the best decisions that people can make, which is I will seek wisdom. So I want to acknowledge you for those two things. That's huge. So thank you. Thank you so much. Seriously. Yeah. Thank huge. you. <laughs> I appreciate that. What well, Mitch, 
I was just going to say, up. yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, thank you so much for being on here. Uh, and yeah, you guys will definitely hear from him again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. All right, boss. Yeah. yeah we'll talk soon. All right. All right.